Here's another classic example of an integral in polar coordinates. The problem is to find the volume of the region obtained from a solid ball by cutting out a cylinder of height h and the parts of the ball above and below the cylinder. So here's a picture of the region. So here's the cylinder. It has height h. And we want the part of the ball that's outside the cylinder. So um, imagine we take a solid ball and we take a, a drill and drill right through it, starting at the top and going down to the bottom. And we drill out this whole part. And we, we just want the outer part, which looks sort of like a, a ring you might wear on your finger. And I want to find the volume of that region. Now, the statement of the problem might look a little funny because I've only given you the height h of the cylinder, and I haven't given you the radius of the cylinder or the radius of the ball. So let's work out the problem and see what happens. So we should at least give those numbers names. So let r1 be the radius of the cylinder. and let r2 be the radius of the ball. Okay, now the volume, if we, if we imagine that this cylinder is, is vertical, so let's draw our axes like this, so here's x, y, and z. Um, so the sphere is centered at the origin and the cylinder is vertical then the volume is the double integral of the over the shadow of the region of the height of the upper boundary. I'll just write that as upper height minus the height of the lower boundary, which I'll write as lower height dA. Now the shadow of this region is an annulus. So it's in between two circles. It's in between the circle of radius r1 and the circle of radius r2. So the shadow of the whole ball is the disk of radius r2. And then we've cut out everything that's over the disk of radius r1. So another way to say what this region is, is it's the part of the ball of radius r2 that is outside of the the um, part whose shadow is the um, disk of radius r1. Okay, so so this is this is our shadow. All right. Um, so I'll write this as r1 is less than or equal to r is less than or equal to r2. That's our region. And the upper height is the height of the upper part of this sphere of radius r2. So it's the square root of r2 squared minus x squared minus y squared. So that's the upper height of the sphere. And then the lower height is minus the negative square root. integrate over area. And instead of taking this thing and then subtracting minus it, I could more simply just multiply by 2. So I have the double integral r1 less than or equal to r is less than or equal to r2 of 2 times the square root of r2 squared minus x squared minus y squared dA. So far so good. Now to evaluate this integral, it will be a lot more convenient if we do it in polar coordinates. So let's do that on the next page. So we want to find 2 times the double integral over r1 is less than or equal to r is less than or equal to r2 with the square root of r2 squared minus x squared minus y squared dA. Now using polar coordinates, they can write this as 2 times the integral as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, because theta can be anything. And r goes from r1 to r2. And the integrand, the function that I need to integrate is just the square root of r2 squared minus r squared. And then I multiply by the magnification factor, which is r. 
and then drt theta. So once again, this r is the magnification factor. Okay, now just as in the previous example, um, the antiderivative of this is minus one third times r2 squared minus r squared to the 3 halves. Because if I differentiate r2 squared minus r squared to the 3 halves, I get 3 halves times minus 2r um, times the square root of this. So that's minus 3 times what I want. And then divide, multiplying by minus 1 third fixes that. Okay, and I have to evaluate this at r equals r2 and r equals r1, and then integrate the result over theta. Now, when I integrate, when, when I evaluate at r equals r2, I get 0. So the only thing that contributes is at r equals 1. So I have minus r2 squared minus r1 squared to the 3 halves d theta. And then when I integrate over theta, what I've got here is a constant, so I just multiply by 2 pi. So these two minus signs cancel out, and I get 4 pi over 3 times r2 squared minus r1 squared to the 3 halves. Okay, but the original problem, if you go back to the previous page, it didn't give me r1 and r2, it gave me h. So I need to see if I can express the answer in terms of h. Well, let's, let's draw a vertical cross-section of our region. So here is a circle of radius r2, and then I have a cylinder, radius r1. Okay, so in this, if I draw a center point here, the distance to the outer circle is r2, and the distance to the vertical line, which is the boundary of the cylinder, is r1. And this is a right triangle. And then the other leg of this right triangle is 1 half the height of this cylinder by symmetry. So by the Pythagorean theorem, I have r1 squared plus h over 2 squared equals r2 squared. And so r2 squared minus r1 squared is h over 2 squared. Okay, so now I can put that in here. So this is 4 pi over 3 times h over 2 squared to the 3 halves. And that is just 4 pi over 3 times h over 2 cubed. So when I multiply this out, I'm going to get an h cubed, and then I'm going to have to divide by 8. So I get pi h cubed over 6. And that's the final answer. So kind of remarkably, it really only depends on h, even though we needed to use r1 and r2 to figure out what it was. So if you want to make a wedding band of height h by taking a ball and drilling out a cylinder, then the total amount of metal you're going to need is going to be the same, no matter what ball you started with, as long as you did it in such a way that you got a cylinder of height h.